How's everyone doing today? So in this episode, we're going to be building off of the script we used last episode. However, we're going to be stripping it down, simplifying it to where instead of having a projectile that arches as it travels through uh, the air, we just have a projectile that will move in a linear path. So when you load this code into your game, you'll notice five rules in the workshop. These top two rules, initiate and initiate physics, all these do are whenever your character spawns into the game, it sets up some basic game rules. These bottom three uh, rules are what you would be copying and pasting to, for each individual projectile. And so if we take a look inside initiate, all this is setting is whenever the character spawns in, I disable all the abilities and create a HUD text which just allows me to keep track of the cooldown for the projectile. In the initiate physics, this is where we actually set up all of the initial variables for the projectile. And so what I'm actually using here is an array instead of having nine different variables. I can condense this whole projectile down into one. And so if we take a look at this spreadsheet right here, what I'm doing in this array is using each index as its own individual variable. And so index zero right here is the cooldown. And so if you want to increase the cooldown between shots of the projectile, you'll change this value right here to say three. If we look back at here, the second one, so index one, is where we would change the speed of the projectile. That's how fast it will travel, essentially. Uh, two is the radius of the projectile, which will also change the trail of the projectile and the explosion radius. And then three is the damage. These top four indexes are the only variables you need to change to customize how your projectile travels. Index 4 will be your initial velocity. In this initiate physics, I go ahead and just set it equal to a vector 0, 0, 0. You don't have to do this. I just do it because I think it looks nice inside the inspector. Same with index 5, which is the projectile's position. Index 6 is actually your delta time. And so what your delta time is, is a number that indicates how often the projectile will update and so that will control essentially all of the movement of the projectile as well as the cooldown. Index 7 is just a um, variable that will keep track of the cooldown so it's if you create a HUD text you would be showing index 7 as the cooldown timer and then all the indexes past eight are reserved for entity IDs and so you can essentially add however many effects you want to the projectile to really make it your own. The next thing we'll need to do is call the projectile. So moving into the initiate projectile script and taking a look at the action list, the first thing we're checking is making sure that the cooldown tracker hasn't already started. If it has, let's go ahead and skip this. If it hasn't, and go ahead and start the cooldown tracker. The next thing we're setting is the initial velocity of the projectile, which will determine that set path for the projectile as it travels through the air. After that, we'll set the initial position of the projectile. Past that, we are checking to see if the projectile has already been created, meaning that it is currently traveling through the air. If it hasn't been created, go ahead and create it. If it has, skip it and just move it back to the starting position. So the two things you will most likely be changing in this script are which button activates the projectile as well as what type of effects are created with the projectile. If you want to change what button activates it, you would just switch this as firing primary to button held ability 1, 2, etc. If you want to change what type of effect is being created with the projectile, you would just switch these two actions. Only change the type of the effect as well as the color because your position and the radius is already being set uh, from an earlier action. If you want to get rid of an effect, you would just delete this plus its corresponding set player variable at index, and you would switch the skip if to uh, mimic how many actions you have down here. Same with adding effects. You would just add or create a new effect and then set player variable at index, and you would change the index by one. So you would go up to 10, and then you would change the skip by two. The projectile movement will control the movement of the projectile as well as the cooldown. And so if we take a look at the action list, what this is checking is if the uh, effects are spawned in, so they are not destroyed, then go ahead and move the projectile as well as uh, play the effect behind it, which will create that trail. If 
if you want to edit the trail again you would just click on this you would change the type as well as the color the position of it and the radius again are being of are, are being set from earlier actions moving down the list we go ahead and wait and these four actions right here are what control the cooldown and so it's checking to make sure that the cooldown is not back to zero if it's not then go ahead and decrease it um, as well as if it's down past zero set it back to zero this is just a check to make sure that the cooldown doesn't go below zero um, and then this will loop either until the effect is destroyed or until the cooldown is over the way that projectile hit detection works is that it will only be called if the projectile still exists and the distance between the current position of the projectile and its next position or whichever wall it is going to hit between now and its next position if the distance is less than the radius plus a little bit of math to involve the speed so that way the hitbox is increased the faster it goes so that way you have a little bit more accurate hit detection if we look over at the action list what this is checking is again if the projectile is still in existence go ahead and destroy the effects afterwards play an explosion effect if you want to change this change the type and the color the position and the radius are already set in previous actions and then afterwards is where you would add your da damages your statuses anything you want to do when the projectile hits its location and so for the damage what I did is I am actually damaging an array of players so all the players within a certain radius of the projectile when it hits its final location and for the radius I'm using the same math that I am using for the explosion radius if you wanted to decrease the explosion radius uh, and the damage radius you would just change this value right here again inside the explosion radius this value right here our end result being a projectile that will move in a linear path based on where the character is looking with a working cooldown timer with it. I'll go ahead and post the array list down below of all the variables I used as well as the share code. But until next time, take care.